Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, the Michigan Wolverines national champions of the 2023 season. The boys were fired up last night. We actually got on to do a game breakdown. It got off tracks. It got it got off the tracks really, really quick. Obviously, Michigan fans extremely excited. Back again tonight, want to talk a little bit about what this Michigan team will look like in 2024. Many of you guys have heard the game breakdowns, but with those game breakdowns, a lot of the narrative is that this Michigan team won't be competitive in 2024. I mean, the narrative is that this fe- this team and program, they, they struck gold in this season, and it's not going to be nearly the same team in 2024. And although they are losing a lot of players to the NFL draft off a very good team, I think a lot of people don't realize that this Michigan team in 2024 is going to be extremely dangerous as well. I want to talk about who's returning, what this team will look like in 2024. Before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys and a special shout out to the Michigan fans. This has been a program that you guys know we absolutely love. There's nothing more that we love than talking Michigan football. The people that have been rocking with the boys cannot thank you guys enough. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. A magical season. Dill, I'm going to give it to you. Michigan football in 2024. How are we feeling? I mean, I think what excites me most about what Michigan can be, and it's essentially about what what you kind of built up to until this championship run in 2023. I mean, that's about three years now of just building, getting better, seeing guys develop through the program. And it wasn't, it wasn't based on recruiting. It wasn't based on having top five classes or, or those sorts of things. It was based on kind of identifying what you want your culture to be, run the ball, be really physical and play exceptionally good defense when they transitioned from the Don Brown era to the Mike McDonald, Jesse Minner era. And they stuck to that like a T and that's again, they're going to lose some guys obviously off a very good team. But I think the fact that they have the culture in place and frankly, you are going to return a bunch of really talented young guys. I think that's what gives me the most confidence moving forward. Yeah, culture player development. I mean, I, I don't think anyone can make the argument like Michigan's player development has been bar nobody. It's been the best in the country for the last couple of years because, yeah, this is not a Michigan team that is a top five recruiting team in the country. I think, quite frankly, there's a bone to pick with the recruiting rankings, right? The recruiting rankings are heavily skewed to the guys that have track tons, that the guys, the wide receivers that play seven on seven in the offseason. And Michigan doesn't really follow that. So according to 24-7 Sports, Michigan might rank 12th overall in the country. According to Michigan's big board, I have a feeling the rankings and how they feel about their classes the last couple of years have been a lot better than what 24-7 Sports or On3 reflects. They'll get into- honestly, to me, that just shows that it's not like a linear path to success because I, I don't want to be that guy who's up there and saying recruiting rankings don't matter. It's like, yes, of course sure. they matter. I mean, we see how good Alabama and Georgia are year yep. in and year out, and they recruit like that. But then you see teams like Washington and Michigan break through kind of by building it a little bit different, using the portal really effectively to maybe fill those holes that you maybe miss when you don't recruit big, deep, giant classes. Like you see that they got the cores, they have their players, and then they use the portal a little bit. I think that does give a new avenue to how you can win this game. And I think that's why you saw more parity than you've seen in a really long time in college football this year. I also think there's an element, you just made me think of this, and we'll we'll get to what this team looks like in 2024 in a second. You saw so many teams, including what Ryan Day took, uh, an Urban Meyer Ohio State team that was kind of prided on physicality and running the football to kind of that spread. We're going to try to just outscore teams. Even to an extent, Bama moved to that for a little bit. In Georgia at times, you've seen all of these teams kind of go to, all right, we got to score as many points as possible. Let's outscore teams. Where's Michigan gone? They've gone the other way. So everyone's out recruiting all this skill, talent, and all this speed. Michigan, to 12 personnel, two tight end formations, condensed formations, six offensive line sets. And what you're seeing is Michigan went the opposite way. And there's not a lot of teams that can handle Michigan along the lines of scrimmage because they've recruited to, to play that way. And that's how they've developed. And so I think that helped Michigan in the last couple of years, all these teams going to that, that spread offense and all that speed. And Michigan went the opposite way. Let's get into what this team looks like in 2024. Obviously, Starting with the quarterback position, that's the biggest one. J.G. McCarthy, whether he goes to the NFL draft or whether he does not, he's going to be a phenomenal NFL NFL quarterback. I think when he goes to the NFL, Dill, regardless if J.J. comes back or not, 
make no mistake about it, this Michigan team is still going to run the football and be extremely physical on the line of scrimmage. I think this offense is going to be just fine in 2024 here. I mean, that's like the thing. It's just, it's not totally dependent on having a CJ Stroud at quarterback or having, yeah, one of those like real difference makers that a lot of teams are. I mean, it certainly helped. And I do think that was a big part of why Michigan probably broke through to some extent is that JJ, I know the numbers don't necessarily say it, but like he did play really big in big moments for Michigan, gave him a lot with his legs, didn't make a ton of mistakes, obviously. So like JJ was obviously a huge part of it but he wasn't the deciding factor. I mean, at the end of the day, they played, they ran the ball and played really good defense. So I think you bring in a guy like Alex Orgy. I mean, he does give you a different dynamic and you saw them use him quite effectively this year against some really good teams, including Ohio state and both and against Washington a little bit. So you have a guy, I think that's ready to kind of come in. And again, the offense might look a little different in, in its flavor, but it'll be the same base offense. It'll be about playing really physical and making teams match up to that. Alex Orgy running this offense in 2024, just absolute bully ball. I would I would love that. Obviously, you want JJ back, but Alex Orgy was extremely exciting development in this offense. But you start talking about what's around the quarterback, I think it'd make a ton of sense for Donovan Edwards to come back in the running back room. But more importantly, a guy like Kalel Mullins, I mean, that dude is a, he's figured out the running back spot. You see it. He's more comfortable carrying the football. He's more comfortable reading his holes. He's more comfortable making people miss at the second level. And he's a battering ramp. Like this guy is a former linebacker that kind of, if you were to say, we want a Michigan running back to run this way, that is how Club Mullins runs the football. And then you go to the offensive line and I get it. They are losing a lot of talent, a lot of good players to the NFL I said this at the beginning of the season, and I still feel it today. Michigan had five, six, seven guys that weren't starting on the offensive line that were reserve guys that would probably be playing on 90% of the Power 5 programs across the country. Dill, this offensive line, am I saying it's going to be as good as what we saw the last couple of years, especially in 2023? No, it's going to be a very, very good unit in 2023. I mean, but we're going to like see because I think Miles Hinton's already pretty much said he's coming back, and then you look. Giovanni El Hadi, Greg, and like Raheem Anderson. I mean, you got some absolute like guys who just looked the part coming up and were recruited really talented football players, look like they're gonna be really good, have had a lot of time to develop in an offensive line room that's now kind of set the standard, if you will, for college football linemen. I think that frankly matters a lot more than people kind of think. It's like you don't know that they're gonna be good because you haven't necessarily seen them play. But when you kind of have a unit now that's churned out pros for about three years at a really high level, I think it gives you more confidence than than not like if they if they had bad offensive lines, let's say for three years. Just throw more Ben Herbert. It doesn't get better than that in terms of developing offensive line. I have a ton of trust that this unit's gonna be good. You should have shouted out Andrew Gentry because I think he's gonna be an absolute dog for Michigan as well. Even the wide receiver position, we'll move to the defense in a second. I mean, Samaj Morgan, I get had a rough playoffs. There's a reason they were playing him so much, but they know what he can do. He's going to be very good in 2024. You obviously have a guy like Tyler Morris, Darius Clemens, but what I think nobody's going to talk about in the offseason that I think everybody should be talking about is Colson Lovell. I mean, he is a guy that is a difference maker in that passing attack, and everyone wants to drag Michigan's wide receivers through the mud. Dill, Colson Loveland, I think, is the best tight end in the country next year. I, I don't even see how you could argue it. I mean, I think he wasn't that far away from Bowers. And Bowers is great. Bowers is probably better than him this year, but I'm not sure we're talking about Colson Loveland in a much different light as he kind of develops in because, I mean, you saw that just a monster game-changing play against Washington, dominated in that Ohio State game, has been huge in huge moments for Michigan and, and can really block at an extremely high level. So it's just, again, I think people sleep on him. And to me, I'm really excited about the wide receiver room actually – possibly getting better because i mean you saw some moments from tyler morris yes like that play against alabama that's kind of a different play and roman wilson's played really good football but they really didn't have they didn't have that like explosive threat out of that room enough and you started to see a little bit with samaj and obviously morris and i really want to see clemens blossom i mean that's still the guy we're all kind of looking at we saw that play in the spring game a year or two ago or whenever it was and thought like man when are we going to see this in the game I still think you're really excited about what the talent is in that room. And and I think that's, frankly, a room that's got a lot of kind of 
room to with, grow. I mean, with all the 12 personnel, it's just if you're a young wide receiver, it's hard to get on the field. We're, and by the way, you noted tight ends blocking. I That deserves more emphasis. Like what those tight ends, Bredesen, like those guys were such a meaningful part. And Colson love them. He's a phenomenal blocker, A.J. Barner. That's such a huge part of this Michigan offense. And you have to give a massive shout out to those tight ends and how they blocked against Washington, how they blocked for the last couple of years. Dill, moving to the defensive side of the football, I mean, you're returning, in my mind, and yes, I'm a Michigan fan, but I'm going to say it anyways, the best duo of interior defense alignment in the country in 2024, and that's Kenny Graham, Mason Graham. I mean, that that feels like it'd be really hard to argue. I, I think Mason Graham's one of the better players in the country. Just how dominant he is, rushes the pass at an extremely high level, sheds blocks as good as anyone I've seen in football. And again, like doesn't necessarily look it because he's not the biggest. He's not like doesn't like have that kind of pro level look to him, but just dominant player really knows how to play with leverage and just dom and take games over. And Kenny Grant, big development over the course of the year. I think there saw at moments earlier in the season where he wasn't just dominating like he started to against teams like Alabama and then again in in, in that Washington game. But you really started to see him put it together. He's the guy I'm most excited about in terms of what he might look like next year because I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. Kenny Grant, I can't. You, you, Kenny Grant and Mason Graham. Mason Graham, he was good all. Kenny Grant, though, at the last six weeks of the season was just another animal. And then you look, you have Derek Moore coming back, who I think is, again, one of the better edge rushers in this 2024 year. Maybe McGregor's coming back. Maybe Josiah Stewart's coming back. Then you look at the linebacker group, Deshaun Barham coming in the transfer portal. was a former true freshman All-American from Maryland. Ernest Hausman kind of didn't get as much playing time because of how good Junior Colson and Mikey Bear were. That linebacker group looks very, very good. And then you look in the back end, and yes, you're going to lose guys like Mikey Sandstrill, Josh Wallace. I'd imagine Rod Moore goes to the NFL, certainly deserves it. Will Johnson is the best cornerback in the country next year. I think you have Keon Sab, who we didn't get to see a ton of throughout the year, pretty much played excl- the whole entire national championship game, missed the tackle early. After that, he was absolutely dynamite. You start looking at this secondary room and saying, that looks like a group that's going to be very, very good in 2024 as well. I mean, you started to see from Keon Sab what you've seen from Rod Moore now for two straight years in terms of being so versatile, being able to play that high safety in that free safety role and have the instincts to carry guys across the middle when he had to or, or jump routes when he had to. And then you also saw a little bit of that ability to play in man coverage and also tackle. Again, he missed that one tackle, but aside from that, was really nails and coming up and being forceful and playing physical. All those things you've seen from Rod Moore that's made me think he's right up there with anyone in the country at that safety spot. You saw from Keon Sab, and, and that just goes to show, like, yeah, people think, oh, Makari Page, he was dinged up for sure in that national title game. But you see those young guys kind of step in and be ready. It makes you think, like, well, can we see something like that from a Zeke Barry, from a Jaden McBurrows, from an Amarion Walker as these guys get another year to develop? You're just starting to see Michigan kind of show that ability to reload a little bit because of how they're developing up through their program and not losing as many guys to the portal as some of these other teams. That's another really good point. Like you've seen, I mean, Alabama, Georgia, they lose and they recruit to a high enough level where that's just going to happen. Like Michigan's had a ton of guys. Like going back to my comment about the offensive line, a lot of guys could hit the transfer portal post spring and when it started and they decided to stay and they're going to be back next year. Michigan for as good of a football team as they were, they don't lose guys to the portal like Alabama, like Georgia, like Ohio state does. So that's another thing you talk about development. Like keeping guys in the program to be developed is a massive story. Michigan's been able to do that. Am I saying that this Michigan team is going to run it back in 2024 and win a national championship? No. I think we saw a really special team in Michigan this year. That being said, make no mistake about it. This is going to be one of the better teams in the country next year as well. Saw them ranked outside of the top five in one of the preseason polls for 2024. Ludicrous stuff. I think this, I Michigan- think, yeah, this narrative that they're going to like fall off a cliff and they just struck gold with the COVID. Yeah, that's more, yeah. that. It's it's such nonsense. They were so good last year. They were good in 21. I just, I, I don't, I don't get why people would immediately assume. And again, I don't think I'm, I'm kind of with you. It's like this team was going to be uniquely special because of what they kind of had coming back from 22. But I just, I don't see how you wouldn't have some level of confidence that this Michigan culture has kind of finally been put in place where guys 
are developing up through the program and, and kind of having that winner's mentality. And when they need to make big plays and big moments, they're making them. And you just never saw that really until 21 when, when kind of the narrative changed and in, in Michigan really hasn't looked back since they've gotten better every year. This is going to be a dangerous team in 2024. Again, Michigan fans, it's been a blast of a season. Cannot thank you guys enough for well, riding. We'll always today. have 24, though, or 23, I should say, no matter what. I mean, you 100%. just see how hard how it is to win a national championship in college football. Like Alabama and Georgia probably to an extent have made it. I mean, they've, like, spoiled their fans, but I also think they make it a little delusional for everyone else. Like, oh, we should be that. It's been so hard for so long. I mean, you saw Clemson struggle to kind of maintain that edge at times. I mean, Michigan getting it, it's just – it's like the best. It's its literally the best feeling ever. It's awesome. And, again, thank you guys. Again, if you all enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all later.